Hi, this is Sarah from New Thing Nurse. I'm really excited today. I'm setting a timer because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm really excited to be here today with my new friend, Micah, who I met earlier this year through the Emergency Nurses Association. And she is here today to talk to me about being a newer nurse during COVID. And also she, where she is traveling right now as a newer nurse um, on a COVID relief uh, travel assignment. I'm really excited to have her here. So Micah, if you wanted to introduce yourself and we'll just get started. Sure. So once again, thank you for having me. I'm um, happy to do this and really share my story as a new grad. I think it's a story that you don't get to hear too often. But my name is Micah David. Um, I am a new grad nurse. I have 11 months experience in the emergency department. Um, I come from a level two trauma center before I decided to take a COVID crisis assignment. Um, and then prior to being a nurse, um, I did about two and a half years as an ED tech and then in my past life, I was in healthcare administration. So um, this is like a second career for me. Um, I am also a member of ENA. I am on the 2020 board as the emerging professional liaison for this year. So um, I get to work with all types of emergency nurses with five years or less of experience. So um, hopefully if any of you are watching, um, this is something that you may consider in the future or um, be able to get just some pointers about just being a new grad or just a newer nurse and um, wanting to travel. And just as a thought, they're having a special right now for nursing students, aren't they? Emergency yes, Nurses Association. They are. What can you yes. tell us a little bit about that? Of course. So right now, if you are a nursing student, they are offering free student um, memberships for ENA. That is a Fantastic prices, 100% free, free 99. So if you want to be a part of ENA, this is the best opportunity to do so. I actually joined ENA as um, through their free membership last year or two years ago. I love and it. It's given me so many different benefits, the opportunity to network with some of the giants in the field and really be able to speak about it um, during uh, my residency interviews. That was like a highlight being a part of ENA. It shows that you are already committed to the field, both in the hospital and outside the hospital. So definitely jump on that. It is free. All you do, go on the website, ena.org, and you can sign up right there. No, no gimmicks, none, none of that. It's completely free. I love that. And it's, I think, good through the end of May. So jump on that if you're a nursing student right now or still have a nursing student email address because I think that might be a good deal for you. Um, okay, so Micah, tell me. So you're an ER nurse, 11 months experience. You're also from Georgia, which is where I'm originally from, although I'm in the Bay Area now. Um, so tell me what it's like having start been working, starting your nursing career kind of in the last few months with COVID. And then how did you transition from where you started working in the emergency room to where you are now? Yeah, so um, like I said, I come from a level two trauma center. So the transition, I would say, may be a little bit easier as far as the type of cases that you um, are exposed to. Um, as far as the COVID goes and just the pandemic, I think the experience, I could argue that it could be the same for everyone across the board. It's something that no nurse has dealt with. Um, can say that no nurse really has dealt with the pandemic and how to respond to that and how crisis management looks like. So from that experience, I use that as kind of my um, opportunity to take a crisis assignment to deal with something that no one has dealt with. And I'm just here to help. I'm here to be extra hands, to really be in an area where they need the help desperately and I am in the sponge stage of my career, so I am here to help and to just be hands-on. Um, coming from Georgia, it is very different. Um, not only do you have to consider what the policies are in your state, but you also have to consider the policies of the state that you are going to, which I think a lot of people forget. Like Certain aspects of ER nursing are the same, like ACLS is ACLS, code is a code. Um, a stroke is a stroke, but some of the other smaller things that you see, because it's not just people coming in with COVID, it's still everyone. Um, you just have to keep in mind when you're going from state to state, which can be a little bit of a difference, especially for newer nurses, because you're only taught one thing, because you only know one thing, because you're new. So um, trying to keep that open book and that open just mind uh, when going into any type of assignment, um, but I just decided to do this because what other opportunity would I get to learn crisis management and to 
um, being a pandemic and helping the, um, one of the epicenters of this all. So um, it was something that I just decided to do spontaneously. Um, it wasn't something that I pre-planned. I uh, just signed up with an agency, got a contract in two days, signed it, and moved to New York, booked a flight and moved to New York for the next three months. Um, and so far, it has been a very rewarding experience um, just being around uh, these great nurses who have been fighting the fight since the beginning and just trying to just trying to give them some relief. Um, it is something that I, it, it's amazing. That's fantastic. Now paint the picture for us a little bit. So you're there on a three month assignment. So those are usually 12, 13 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing three shifts a week. Is that correct? Four. Four shifts a week. Okay. And then are you nights or days? Nights. And then are you in the emergency department? I'm assuming. Yes. Okay, very good. And then tell us a little bit about what you're seeing. So are you in the like very urban center of New York? Are you seeing um, a lot of COVID patients right now? What kind of PPE are you seeing? What's your ratio? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So I do work in New York City. I am in an urban setting. Um, I'm actually right around the corner from one of their biggest um, homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. So um, I do see see a, a huge demographic of people. Right now, um, because there are a lot of travelers in the ER, um, my ratios, it depends. Um, most day or most nights is four to one, um, but depending on the area of the ER I'm, I'm in, it can go up to six to one. Um, as far as COVID patients, we kind of treat everyone that comes through the uh, doors as if they have COVID because just about everyone does. Um, so as far as PPE, I wear an N95, a surgical mask, a gown. Um, I have my own scrub hat, but they do have like the scrub, uh, the temporary ones that you can wear, um, shoe covers, the whole nine. Um, and as far as like the usage of PPE, we're actually really, really uh, blessed that we don't have to do the paper bags. Um, that was something that I was used to in Georgia where we stored our N95 in a paper bag. We don't do that here. We're able to... Um, get a different mask every shift. Um, of course, we'd still wear the same N95 throughout our entire 12 hours, but at least we're able to get a new one um, for the next shift. So and just to paint it a little clear, are you in that full PPE for the entire shift? Or are you taking it on and off during your shift? So it depends on the area that I'm in. Like this particular ER has several beds. I couldn't tell you how many because to be <laughs> honest, it's if there is room, there is a bed. Um, so it's just, it just is what it is. If there is a room for a bed, there's going to be a bed there. There's going to be a patient in it. Um, actually, one of the first things I was told when I started my assignment, because I was trying to figure out, do you guys assign by rooms or do you just kind of pick up if when a patient's placed in, they're like, don't worry about rooms. If you see a patient, take care of them. So um, yeah, so I, it depends on the area of the ER that I'm in. Um, if I'm more in like the ICU section, of the ER um, where basically patients are waiting for an ICU bed, but there are none, then I'm gonna stay in my full PPE. If I'm more of the fast track area, then I'm at least going to wear my N95 and my surgical mask. Um, no matter the area, N95 surgical mask, even when I'm on break, um, I don't take it off unless I'm putting some food in my mouth or something like that. Very good. Um, and then how do you feel? So you have 11 months experience. You did go from a busy level two ER and now you're in this situation where you're doing literally disaster relief for COVID. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of tell me how you're feeling with the level of stress and the what you're seeing uh, for patient care. It sounds like the ratios are close to kind of what you're seeing in Georgia, depending on the area. Um, how are you feeling? Are, do you feel prepared for this? Do you feel like you're getting more than you can bargain for? And how supportive and helpful are your colleagues right now? Yeah, sure. So I initially was very, very nervous. Um, I think that's a natural feeling for anyone going into their first assignment, um, but more so nervous because I only do have 11 months experience. So I did not, I think went for any new grad, it is important to under, to develop those critical thinking skills, not just this is how my hospital does things. And so this is the way that I know how to do it, but really develop those critical thinking skills so that if a patient comes in with cardiac issues, you understand what you need to do assessment wise, what to anticipate so that it's not 
just group to your hospital, but you're able to apply those critical thinking skills across the board. I think that'll make a smoother transition for you, which is what I did, which is what my preceptor taught me to do. How to get hands on with my patient, how to um, see a patient, know that this is what's going on with them. This is what to expect. This is what I should be looking for. So that when now that I'm in New York and I see a patient who is having respiratory issues, I know what to look for. I know what to anticipate. I can um, pretty much guess what type of drugs we're going to be um, doing. And it's just more so of a, which Omnicell do I get that drug from? Not so much. I don't know what's going on with the patient. So um, that aspect really prepared me um, being in a, the trauma center that I came from. I do come from a very, very, very busy trauma center. Um, I was afforded the opportunity to see all types of patients. Um, I, I come from a culture of, we push you off the deep end and you need to learn how to swim. So um, drowning and swimming is something that I'm used to. So coming into this environment, it really wasn't too much of a difference. Um, that's why I encourage new grads, if you um, are interested in, especially like more of the specialty areas like your L&D, critical care, ER, stuff like that, um, go to a, bu a busy hospital because that's where you're going to learn the most. It just is, that's where you're gonna see a lot of the patients that's where a lot of the smaller hospitals are going to transfer their patients to. That's where you're really going to get your um, a good amount of learning. But um, as far as the transition to New York, everyone has been phenomenal. The culture there is so just everyone is just helping each other because everyone is in the same boat. We just want people to survive. So everyone is helping everyone. Yes, I have my set of patients, but it is very common for someone to see, oh, I'm doing a blood a finger stick on my guy. I'm going to do a finger stick on yours. Hey, I already hung that bolus for you. Hey, did you get a break? Go eat, relax. Like everyone, like the uh, physicians, the residents, the NPs, PAs, everyone is, thank you for coming. Thank you for helping us out. Thank you for all that you do. Everyone is just super sweet. I have honestly not run into anyone that's been um, like that stereotypical, we don't like travelers, you know, go away type attitude. Everyone has been super, super fantastic. And that brings me to another question. Um, are you replacing staff so that they can be um, off for a period of time? Or are you helping just um, give support to the staff that are there at this facility? So both. So um, management did say that they um, hired a lot of uh, travelers because they want to give their staff breaks. Oh, um, and that's very understandable. I had a, a very heartbreaking conversation with one of the um, newer grads actually at um, the hospital who said that she thinks she's starting to develop P PTSD. And I asked her why, like what's going on? And she said, because sometimes I wake out of my sleep just like hearing like the cracking of bones from like, you know, when we do um, compressions or like just the creaking of the bed from all the compressions that we do that it just wakes me out of my sleep. And it's just to hear something like that. I mean, that is a, that's sad. That's heartbreaking. I'm just glad to be able to give them relief because I mean, they were here when it first started when no one knew what was going on before media got to it. They were here when all of that was happening. So um, if I can provide them with relief, I'm happy to do it. Um, please take all the breaks that you need um, because this is just the first win. We don't know if a second wind is coming. So I think that's such a gift that you can give is when you're in these really heavy times. I know and I've always, I've worked for DM for the last few years. And so even in the winter, if I can pick up a random shift for people, which I can't often do, but sometimes I can, it is just such a gift sometimes to be out of flu season. So I can't imagine how happy people are to see you. reinforcements um, while they're going through this crazy wow. pandemic. Now, how are you handling your mental health now? So you're having a lot of change, a lot of transition, but you seem to be a person who really thrives in that kind of role. Um, tell me a little bit about how you're managing the stress of everything, what you're doing on your off days, you're doing uh, four shifts a week. That's more than even more, most full-time nurses do. So what are you doing to take care of yourself? Um, that's a great question. I learned early um, on into just nursing school that there's healthy ways of coping and not so healthy ways of coping. So um, I learned quickly what my healthy ways of coping look like. And I really tried to tune in them to like here. So um, I think being a night shifter, um, sometimes we feel guilty after we get off our shift that we sleep 
throughout the day. I don't. I stopped feeling guilty about that. I get my sleep. If I sleep until four o'clock in the um, afternoon, I sleep until four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so let, definitely a lot of sleep. Um, talking with family members, just letting them know that I'm okay. Having my me time where I don't look at my phone, where I am, if I want to watch Netflix, if I want to cook, I don't, I tune the rest of the world out. Um, I like to open my windows, get fresh air in. Um, I like to just stroll around like my block here and of course my mask, but I do like to stroll around my block, get fresh juice, exercise, um, do laundry, just things that keep uh, my apartment in order here uh, to provide the most order for me so that on my off days, those are days that I relax, do whatever I want to do. And then on my on days, all I'm focusing on is my task at hand. I love that. Um, and I also, you mentioned your hotel um, where you're staying. And I think I see behind you, what I'm really interested in is how, what is your decon process in getting into your hotel? I think I see some like Sandy wipes. Yeah, there. I'll just show it to you. Yeah, I would love to hear that. So I got a short-term apartment. Awesome. Um, so when I come in, like this is the door here. I come and I have like my little disinfecting table. So I have these biosonic wipes that kill tuberculosis, virus, bacteria. Um, I have gloves here because they are pretty toxic. I love it. I have hand sanitizer. And then I have, wait a second. Okay. I have this, which is act, it's called Birex. Okay. And it's supposed to kill coronavirus. So when I come in, I disinfect my work bag here. And then I put my work shoes on these little wipes here. Mm -hmm. And then I come over here and then I put my stuff here, like my badge, my keys, my scissors, everything. I disinfect it here and then I disinfect the counter. Um, and then of course I keep my work bag for my work jacket right there. So everything stays at the door and then I go straight to the shower. I love it. That's been something that's been so interesting to me following um, all the nurses that are working in New York on these kind of relief um, efforts right now is kind of watching the different processes. I've seen um, these UV light foot uh, shoe sanitizers yeah. that people are standing on at some of the hotels, I guess, that are housing a lot of the short-term travelers. Um, I've seen different kind of decon processes shown on um, Instagram and Facebook. So it's been really interesting. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, and then the only, the other question I wanted to kind of, or thing I wanted to talk to you a little bit about is um, traveling as a new grad. So um, I traveled briefly. That's how I got from Georgia to the Bay Area. I was planning on traveling all over the country, but landed here, never left. I did three contracts and I was just a little under two years. And at that time, it was, a, um, this was about seven years ago, I think. Um, at that time, you had to have a pretty strict 18 month to two year experience to get into the travel field and get your first contract. Um, I was lucky enough to get mine out here. And then once I was here, I really loved it. So I did three contracts and came on staff. But it was a kind of intimidating process to get into that travel mode, to get my licenses, getting interviews. It took me about probably like three weeks to get everything together, ultimately, besides like getting all my stuff away. Tell me about what your process was and starting at 11 months and maybe how those re requirements to getting into traveling have changed in that time frame. Yeah, so being on a crisis assignment, things work a little bit different. Um, really in crisis assignments, they are just looking for bodies with licenses. So that's not to say if you have two months experience to take a travel assignment, please don't do it. Please don't do it. Hopefully they wouldn't take you. Yeah. I hope at some point there is like a minimum limit, but we'll right. assume. And there, and there should be, but I mean, a recruiter, their job is to fill these spots. So if it's a crisis assignment, something, sometimes in a crisis assignment, they kind of will you know, like, okay, we'll work with it type thing. So um, for my particular assignment, you only need, I think, eight or nine months experience. Okay. Um, but I think you also need like a lot of certifications as well. So um, that was important too. And then I think the type of hospital that you come from um, also is important. But it also needs to be one of those things where you have that very honest conversation with yourself. 
can I handle this? Can I do this? Because just like not look at the money, money aside, money will always be there. We're in a great field where money will always be there, but money aside, can I do this? Because our first duty as nurses is to do no harm. So before you look at the money and all the perks and the free housing, no, can you handle a crisis assignment? And a lot of the descriptions will say, this is an automatic contract, meaning there are no interviews. We audit, you're automatically accepted. You know that you're going to leave in a couple days and you understand that you're going into extreme conditions. That's what it says, extreme conditions. So um, I had to have that uh, talk with myself. Like, is this something that I can handle? Is this something that I can do or willing to do or willing to learn, get out of my comfort zone and accept that my, I have to adapt and be flexible, meaning that if they don't put me in the ER and I'm going to a med surge floor or going to an ICU and I've never been to those floors before, can I handle that? And so, is that a possibility that yeah. you could have been assigned to any sort of specialty? Yes. One of the first questions that one of the managers asked is, who knows how to titrate drips? Great, you're going to the ICU. And it was, that's it you're going to the ICU, you're taking patients, there is no orientation, you already had your orientation shift because we get one orientation shift to just learn the codes, learn where things are, try to find our way around that busy, massive ER, that's it. Next shift, you're on your own. That's another thing to note too. Crisis assignments, one orientation shift, next shift, you're taking patients. Um, so yeah, I... So it's special circumstances um, with crisis assignments, but as far as like next traveling assignments, um, most are still the two years. Um, there are some that will take a year experience with um, certification like your ACLS, BLS, TNCC, stuff like that. Um, those are fewer uh, than the two years, but um, it really just depends on the type of contract. Like I think at more of the more popular areas, metro areas, you're gonna see your two years. Um, at the smaller um, hospitals, you may um, get by with a year, um, but it, it's, it's just still common that the two year mark is um, where they're accepting the most travelers. And that's, that's reassuring to hear. I mean, traveling's not easy, and that's the only reason I mentioned that. I think a um, young nurse can do anything they put their mind to it, especially if they're prepared and ready and have that perspective like you do of flexibility, critical thinking, and all those things. Um, I know 20-year nurses that would be a terrible traveler just because that's the personality they are. Um, but traveling's not for everyone, and it is a very challenging kind of um, environment. Uh, even when I was traveling, it was like two days orientation, and then you're on your own kind of thing. So the best advice I ever got, and I continue to give anyone um, starting something new in general, is just to ask all the questions and don't be afraid to introduce yourself every time. I was like, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm the new traveler. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm the new traveler. Oh, I met you seven times. We'll meet me again. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm the new traveler. It really um, is that. It's... <laughs> It's constant, and I think that's something that, like, even a lot of people don't understand. Like, you're constantly reorienting, relearning, asking a lot of questions as if you are new all over again every single time, every 13 weeks. So it's, are you comfortable with that? Are you comfortable with being lost? Are you comfortable with finally learning the ways of one hospital and then, boom, it's done, go to the next one and having to restart that process over? Are you comfortable with speaking to people? Are you comfortable with some, maybe some of the backlash that you might get from someone being frustrated that you don't know what things are, or where things are? Like, are you comfortable being like an advocate for yourself? Because you're going to be doing that every single contract. Some people, they don't like that or they don't realize that they like showing up to work, knowing where things are, what ex exactly what to do, when to do it, especially in the emergency department, because if somebody decompensates, you don't call a team, you are the team. So it's like, do you know where the crash cart is? Like, do you know what they do here? Are you the team? Do they have a trauma team? It's like all those questions that you kind of have to get answered really quickly. But it's like, are you comfortable with that as well? And I think some of the other things like I didn't think about when I was traveling was um, you have to figure out housing. So you can take the company housing or you have to find your own. Um, another thing I hadn't thought about was um, coming in and like figuring out my schedule. So um, in those contracts, it's really important to specify if you need a certain day off or if you don't want 10 shifts in a row. There are certain things that they can do because you're a traveler. You don't have the same 
staff employment rights that you do as a full-time staff. Um, and then also being so abruptly transitioning from one place to the next. So you have to constantly kind of be thinking about your next step. Um, you don't always get to extend at your contract and sometimes contracts get canceled. And so managing that kind of stress. And um, I think for some people that's like wonderful and really challenging, exciting. And so they thrive in that environment, but others do not. The other thing I didn't think about was all the different EMR systems I had to learn. I learned three yeah. EMR systems in one like nine month period, nine, 10 months when I was doing three contracts. So that was really challenging, but I learned so much I grew so much and so there was like a lovely benefit of that For so sure. um wrapping up just kind of I don't want to keep you all night and I so appreciate you being here with me today and sharing your story with the new thing nurse followers and everybody else who winds up on our random YouTube channel um so tell me I love ending with like your top three recommendations so tell me kind of what your top three recommendations are for maybe new grads who are working in the middle of the COVID crisis or considering traveling during the COVID crisis I'll let you choose but um, tell me three good tips of things that you've experienced you've learned and you would want to pass on to the next uh, round of new grads. Ooh, let's see three things that I would tell a new traveler a new grad traveler sure yeah mm -hmm. especially because those babies are graduating soon it's may yeah. it's yeah. happening soon and and honestly in this day and age traveling a year after you started is not so a uh, like shocking anymore i mean yeah. i'm living proof that it's not um i would say no do your research definitely do your research. There are lots of agencies out here. There are lots of terminology to learn, like blended rates, what's M&I, how to find housing, do I accept stipend, or do I take the company's housing, you know, making sure that you're reading through your contract and you're getting exactly what you asked for. So definitely do your research. Um, this is not a overnight thing, I would start researching about traveling just randomly months prior to all this happening. So I was familiar with the language and all that, but definitely do your research um, because not all travel companies are the same and um, give the same perks and rights for their, um, their travelers. Like you have a lot of rights and you need to know how to advocate for yourself. So definitely do your research. Second one is advocate for yourself, both with the agency company, because really you are on your own. You are an individual contracted employee now. Um, so you need to advocate for yourself, not only with your company, but also at your facility. If you feel like you're being treated unfairly, you need to know how to advocate for yourself and speak up for yourself. Um, learn how to um, deal with conflict management. Um, be a great communicator because all those things come a long way um, with you as a traveler because you are by yourself. So making sure that you know how to advocate for yourself and have effective communication goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And um, I would also say to not let more seasoned nurses steer you away from traveling um, I got my gamut of opinions when I told people that I was traveling. Some were excited for me. Some thought I was making the dumbest decision of my nursing career. And, and I accepted both opinions as just that opinions. Um, I would like to think that I don't jump into things without um, carefully researching and understanding the risks and benefits. And um, you will just have some people who just still have that feeling that um, new grads are supposed to have five plus experience before they can try something new. That's not the case. Um, I'm an advocate. I'm, I'm a firm believer in know thyself, know yourself, know what you're capable of and have that honest conversation with yourself. Um, don't compare your journey or anything like that to someone else. Know what you yourself are capable of. And if you feel like you can handle something, go for it. Um, take opinions as just that opinions. Um, and just make sure that you're making well-informed decisions. So um, those are my top three. Research, advocate for yourself, know thyself. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for those. And I will add one more is taxes. Uh, yes. When you're talking money. Yes. <laughs> how to manage like mobile healthcare, temporary healthcare worker 
taxes because it's its own thing. And there's, um, there is a company, if you don't have one already, called TravelTax.com. Mm -hmm. And they are delightful and specialize in those kind of taxes. But I will say, um, starting my first contract, I think you don't know what you don't know until you're in it. I learned so much those first three months, as I'm sure you've already learned in your first few weeks. Um, <laughs> But the money a year later when you're doing taxes can be quite complex. So keeping really good records and being informed ahead of time was really helpful for me um, yeah. because it's its own tax game and the tax game has changed very much since I was traveling. So if you haven't traveled a long time and have jumped in now, you may want to talk to an accountant, I will say. Yeah, for sure. So Micah, how can we find more of you? I know you're on social media. Tell everyone how to find, uh, how would they would love to, uh, blah, 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 how they would find you on social media to hear more about your travels in New York. Yeah, so I do have a nursing Instagram. It's called Registered Noir, registered and then N-O-R, N-O-I-R-E on Instagram. Um, and I also have a YouTube channel that I'm just starting up. Same name, you can find me on both. Um, I do a lot of rants and vents. A lot of long posts and um, starting videos soon. So um, if you are a new grad, I do tailor a lot of my content on trying to um, give the new grads the best experience they can, get the most out of their nursing career. Or if you are a second careerist, I am myself. So I give a lot of tips as well on how to transition into nursing school and just the nurse life. So um, give me a follow. I like to interact with people, especially during these times. Um, and I try to be as open and as honest as possible. I, I'm a very non-sugarcoat person. I don't sugarcoat things, non-bluff. So um, if you want to see that type of content, please give me a follow. I think that's fantastic. Um, I think, you know, nursing, we can sometimes get a rap for being kind of fluffy and sugar coaty, but I think the modern nurse is much more direct. Um, we're much more of an advocate, a uh, communicative advocate, professional, holistic, communicative yeah. advocate, but all those things. Um, yeah. I can't thank you enough for sharing your story and carving out a little time to be with us today. Um, I hope you are so well. I hope you are so safe. And I'm so glad that you have enough PPE. Um, and just know that you always have a support system in the New Thing Nurse Tribe. And then we can't wait to hear more from you. Okay. Thank you thank so you much, so Micah.